On May 24, 1941, hard and grave tidings reached the capital of Great Britain. The great battle cruiser Hood had been sunk. The Hood was old, thinly armored, and nearly obsolete. But she was, to many Englishmen, a symbol of Britain's invincible sea power. And now, she was at the bottom of the cold waters between Iceland and Greenland, sent there by the guns of the giant Bismarck. The Bismarck, the largest battleship afloat, and called unsinkable by her Nazi builders, represented Hitler's challenge to Britain's ancient supremacy at sea. Britons understood the significance of the sinking of the hood. From the Admiralty, the order went out, find the Bismarck and sink her. Sink her at any cost. Sink her, yes, but find her first. Find her somewhere in thousands of square miles of storm-tossed sea, streaking for the coast of France. Find her under the thick white veil of the Atlantic's eternal fog. Britain had the answer to space and time and fog. Britain called on the Catalina, which is Spanish for Catherine, named for a sunny island off the western coast of the United States, hard by the great California factory which gave her birth. Some Catalinas were already operating under the British Coastal Command, manned by British crews. The Cat wasn't fast by pursuit ship standards, but she was rugged, enduring, built to ride rough water and rough air, fueled enough in her capacious tanks to carry her for tens of hours above trackless seas, armed to beat off all enemy attacks. On that winter's day, the Catalinas took off on what seemed a hopeless task. Somewhere under that mystery of fog, the Bismarck was steaming under forced draft for a safe haven, somewhere between Greenland and the coast of France. Britain's mighty fleet was ready, her seamen cold with anger and aching for a reckoning, but her gunners still lacked a target. The mightiest flotilla ever assembled could only wait. Then a rift in the clouds, a telltale wake, a Catalina flashed the word, quarry sighted. The silent ship sprang to life. Navigators plotted the position given by the Catalina's crew. Britain closed in for the kill. shattered Hitler's dream. Britain had maintained her supremacy in the North Atlantic with the help of a plane designed to maintain United States supremacy in the Pacific.
PBY, the Navy calls her, P for patrol, B for bomber, and Y, the symbol for consolidated aircraft her makers. Back in 1935, the first PBYs took to the water and the air. And shortly afterwards, the Navy undertook a mass flight of PBYs to the Hawaiian Islands. Commonplace today, but then a milestone in the history of aviation. The Navy was warned they might lose some ships. Why risk lives? But the Navy knew what it was doing. Dependable ships, built for distance and endurance. Dependable engines, the product of the best manufacturers in the world. Dependable men, trained by the Navy to man the patrol bombers. A routine flight, the Navy called it. The Navy was right. The Catalina has been called the cruiser of the air. Her wing spread is 105 feet. Her length from nose to tail is 65 feet. She can carry a load of many tons. The range, fully loaded, is over 4,000 miles with a speed of over 200 miles per hour. That was the old PBY. The specifications of the newer models are the Navy's secret. Range, speed, power, armament, and load have all been vastly increased. That much can be told. And the PBYs, new and old, have stood up to all the tasks imposed by modern war. aircraft is no better than the men who fly her. And traditionally, the patrol bomber pilots and navigators are picked from the cream of the naval air cadets. Here at the great naval air training schools on the Gulf Coast of the United States, they receive instruction based on the experience of years. Every naval pilot must know blind flying, learn through hours in the link trainer. Acrobatics. How to shoot. To ride a catapult takeoff. Dive bombing. And finally, in light training seaplanes, how to fly from water. For the patrol bombers are not earthbound, the sea is their airport. Thumbs up, and the student is ready for his first takeoff in the PBY itself. And finally, he gets his wings, the proud insignia of a naval airman. 